Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Uh, please invite your friends and share the link uh, in of uh, the broadcast with your friends on Facebook and other uh, forums. I did not really invite anyone yet, but I guess some people will be here. Today, our uh, topic is about 10 life lessons we can learn from Prophet Muhammad. Now, this is an article written by Muslims, so we are going to discuss what is written there. Uh, but before I go to the article, I would like to share with you the new cover for my new coming book, and uh, I would like to ask you to tell me your opinion about it. Uh, let me share in the screen. <clears throat> um, all right. So this is the top of the cover, as you see and we go down it's a picture of a mosque in the background and then the name the name of the book is going to be six and allah a simple name uh, you know telling us exactly what the, what the book is about <clears throat> and then there is a verse from the quran uh, where it's speaking about the virgins who nobody opened their private part yet or their vagina uh, in, from chapter 55 verse number uh, 56 so this is how the cover will look like um, let us see if you guys you will like it is it coming from your side Yeah, let me maybe if I zoom out, <clears throat> maybe I can make you see the whole image in one piece. Let's see how we can zoom out. Hmm. Yeah, maybe this would be better. <clears throat> so the name of the book is going to be Sex and Allah. The name is very simple and then and going directly to the topic. The topic is about sex and Islam. And uh, volume number one is going to, be, to talk about sexuality uh, starting from before Islam and then between the Arab before Islam and then uh, sexuality uh, in Islam uh, starting from uh, sex and earth and what is the involvement of sex with Islam in earth and then in value number two we are going to talk about uh, sex in afterlife actually value number two is going to be kind of mixed between because it, it, it's you know it's a complete book it's not one uh, it's, it's just two books but it is one uh, so both they complete you start from zero speaking about before Islam how what what the Arab used to practice before Islam uh, as an introduction for sexuality in Islam and before Islam and then after that we go to how what the rules of Islam what the involvement of, of, of sex what is the effect of sex in Islam so the whole book is about sex and nothing else all right um, it's going to be out uh, today is uh, April 7 so I'm guessing maybe April 12 both of them they will be out I hope so so like we have just a few days because uh, the the variant number one is already proofreading done and variant number two is just proofreading so what is left is just proofreading we have nothing reading the, the, the book is done so I hope people will like it and um, we will see um, 
what is the impact of this book will be. However, what you will see in this book is things you never heard, even in my uh, videos, uh, for a very simple reason, because, you know, when you make a book, you go in deep details. Uh, here it's more official, you know, it's, it's a book. It's not, uh, it's not a magazine, it's not a chat room. Um, reference, uh, everything you need. And there's hundreds and hundreds of references. Nothing in the book is coming from my own mouth. Not a single word. Not a single word. Which means you will not see there, someone said, I heard, you know, I think, no. It is what the Muslims believe, what the Muslims teach, what the Muslims have in their books. Nothing else. So all what I do, I present to you information you never heard of, of you know. And in the same time, I help you to understand those uh, information. And you know, if you have my previous uh, books, you know how, how I always present things. It's very simple. Uh, you know, we analyze. Uh, I try to help the one who is reading to think with me. And I don't think for you, but I try to make you think with me, uh, which will make you enjoy the book more. So I hope you guys, you will, you know, when you have it, you will, you will like it. And I have no question. I've not doubt actually that uh, people will love this book. This is the first book ever written about sexuality in Islam. Nobody ever wrote a, bo a book about this topic before. Uh, so I think uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, to have such a book out it took me a while to finish it but I believe it's worth it and you know uh, it's something you do once in your lifetime I mean I'm not going to make a book about sex and Islam every day so it's something you do and you know it's going to stay for generations and generations to come so this is what uh, I wanted to present for you about the book and now we go back to our topic <clears throat> Please let us invite our friends here and let us read this article which made by the Abduls about uh, Muhammad. Uh, you know, there is tons of articles written by Muslims or Muhammadans about their prophet that he is the most amazing, blah, blah, etc. But, you know, the, the real question is how truthful those articles are. And, you know, based on my experience, I never saw one article written by Muslims about Islam is truthful. You see, the difference between Islam and other religions, if a Hindu, he speak about his religion, you don't expect him to be lying. And I don't think he will be lying. He will tell you what he believes. If you speak to someone who is a Buddha, he will not fabricate stories and you know tell you things is not in their religion when you speak to a muslim about his religion sometimes you wonder where those muslims are getting their information from it's hard it's hard to believe how much those people they are obsessed with lying and today is no different and you know uh, our skype is open and the muslims you can feel free to call us and you know to see if if you can prove us wrong <clears throat> all right if we read this article we will find some unique stuff if i am a muslim i will be ashamed to mention them because that will make people laugh at my prophet so what is number one thing oh it's flip what happened to this page for some reason it disappeared hold on
All right. So let us see here. Let me go back to the page. All right, I'm back. All right. Ten life lessons we learn, we can learn from Prophet Muhammad. Number one, always speak the truth. I'm not sure what to say about that, but this is my challenge to the Muslims. Name for me one thing your prophet he said it was truthful and i will give you examples i'm not going to mention the black stone which is going to have eyes and tongue no i'm not going to mention that he promised you that allah will give you english long penis no i will not talk about the half mile or one mile ass the women she will have in heaven no let it go I will not talk about somebody will have orgasm for 70 years I will not talk about uh, Muhammad hearing uh, the the stone saying to him assalamu alaikum I will not talk about any of those I will not talk about the sperm coming from the backbone or the women she have a sperm coming from her ribs because obviously this is all is true Is it your prophet is the one who taught you to lie? How you say to us the prophet he always taught you to say the truth when he Said to you you are allowed to lie On three <sighs> Look what Muhammad, how Muhammad he contradicts himself. Who is the hypocrite? The hypocrite is someone he speaks, he tell lies. When he make a promise, he break it. And when he entrusted, he betray the trust. That is Muhammad. Muhammad, as an example, he took an oath, as we see in the chapter of At-Tahrim, swearing by Allah, That he will never do it again and then he made that a chapter speaking to himself as if Allah talking to him saying to himself oh prophet why you forbid to yourself what Allah made lawful for you so Muhammad he just said the hypocrite is the one who take an oath he swear I will never do it again and then he himself is the first one to break the oath chapter 66 verse number one and this is Quran don't tell me this is a weak hadith hmm? so Muhammad he made a chapter saying that his God told him to break his promise to break his oath isn't it this is what the hypocrite do he make a promise he take an oath and then he is the first one to break it and he make an excuse that his God is the one to ask him to break the oath and what is the oath is about that he will not have sex with his slaves so Muhammad he said the hypocrite is the one who take an oath and he break it and that is Muhammad another example The Quran says Muhammad told the Muslims that when the women they have their period stay away from them all right chapter 2 verse number 222 two. when women they have their period stay away from them until don't approach them guys does it say there don't approach them does it say don't approach them 
until the are clean okay let us see what Muhammad used to do let us see who is the hypocrite here <coughs> When I was ministrating, the prophet would order me to warm myself with Izar, which is a sheet you put. She put like a, like a diaper between her legs, so the blood will not be all over him. And he would fondling me. He would start fondling me. But the Quran says, "Stay away from them." So Muhammad he told the Muslims. The hypocrite is someone who says something, he do something. The one who say, I promise, and he break his promise. The one he swear, I will do this, and then he break his oath. The one who say, don't do that, and then he do it. And this is exactly who is Muhammad. In the Quran, he told them, when the women, they have their period, come on, leave the women alone. But Muhammad himself, he never practiced what he taught. Isn't it, this is the hypocrisy? Was Muhammad a good Muslim or a bad Muslim? Obviously, he's a bad Muslim. If I go right now to a sheikh and I say to him, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Shabir Ali, uh, with your long beard, which is mean nothing, should I approach my wife when she have her period? Shabir Ali, he will say, no, the Quran, brother, the Quran said you should not do that. So why the Prophet was doing that? Any Muslim have an explanation? Any? Is that a prophet of God or this is a prophet of lying? Everything Muhammad he did in his life, obviously, it was a hypocrisy. He says something, he do something. He tell them something, he do the opposite. He teach something he don't believe in, in it himself. Obviously, Muhammad is not a believer. He told the Muslims, you can have four wives, but he want to have as many as he wish. Why? Who are you? If Muhammad is just a servant of God, why the servant of God? He have a privilege, and all of it is about sex and money and power for sure. Why we have to obey the servant of God instead of saying obey God only because if the servant of God is just a servant obeying God is the purpose Muhammad he made Quran saying obey Allah and obey the messenger so he made himself equal to Allah that is the hypocrisy so when the Muslim they wrote an article saying to us that the, the, the lesson we learn from the Prophet is always to speak the truth that is a joke what the truth you are talking about Where Muhammad he taught you and he did told you the truth. We can count lies as much as you wish. All is taught by Muhammad. As an example, your prophet he said the women they have half a brain. That's mean your mother, huh? Uh, you should respect your mother, right? Uh huh. You're right. You respect her a lot. I can tell. So your mother, according to Muhammad, she is half a brain. Is that really truthful or it's a lie? Women, some they are smart, some they are not. But this is the case for men too. Who said that men, all of them they are smart or all of them they are stupid? Hmm? What Muhammad taught you that just because you have a penis, excuse my language, between your legs, that made you superior with the brain. So like a brain and, and penis are connected. Is that the truth? Even Muhammad, he claimed that women, they have not only have a brain, but they don't have a good memory because they are stupid. So he forbid them from being equal witnesses in the court. In fact, if there is one billion women, they saw a crime, they are not allowed to witness because women only can witness in the case of borrowing money. Do 
Do we have any Muslim here? You think I'm not telling the truth? Any Muslim? Please, guys, invite your friends. All right. Uh, if you don't mind, post the link for the video for YouTube in other pages so people will know that we are live on air. If you like to see a real debate between Christians and Muslims, if you know a Muslim, please invite him and ask him to come and to challenge me and to call me live. Because we want you to see a real debate, not one person speaking to himself and giving you his own opinion. Maybe he is not telling the truth. The best way is to challenge the Muslims you ever speak to, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are, and tell them, okay, we have a guy here for you, and we are willing to listen to you both. And you know what? Uh, if, if, if you convince us, you are the winner. It doesn't matter, you know, we, uh, it's about who is the one telling the truth and who is more convincing. Uh, yeah, I appreciate all those who share, you know, because the, the point is, uh, you know, to get to reach out not only to Christians and Hindus, Buddhas, etc., to reach out to the Muslims too. Uh, we want people to see the two sides of the stories. Muslims, they always like to have only one side of the story. This is why you will see a Muslim TV show about Islam, and no, the, all the colors are Muslims. If a Christian call, it's a fake Christian. It's a Muslim playing a Christian. No. When I try, when I try, to uh, call as an example the Dean show they never let me go through they keep saying if any Christian have a question call us I call mm, I never go through never and I have it recorded I have them hanging up on me refusing to let me go through recorded liars Yeah, it's a it's a it's a show, you know. It's a show of of, of lies. You know, the guy uh, he write he read letters he himself he wrote by himself. This brother here he wrote for us a letter. Have you ever heard of somebody writing letters these days to TV stations? I mean, since when? You have a website. You are broadcasting online. People, even your TV is online. So why he wanna watch you? Why he wanna write to you if he can send you an email? A letter and then he hold the phone in his hand hello we have a caller bless brother hello but we never heard any ring and he is using a cell phone have you ever seen a cell phone in TV and then we hear nothing nobody's talking yes uh-huh yes brother uh-huh uh -huh. okay 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 brother I'm going to answer you okay please stay tuned with us yes yes brother thank you thank you now he hang up and supposed he spoke to an individual huh but there's nobody and then you will see the question. The question is written in front of him in the paper. You know, they try to make that there is a show and there is people they are calling, etc. Especially if the caller is a Christian. Like once a caller, he called and he asked, why Christian, why Muslim, they want to kill the Christians? And the guy, he's, he, you know, like, you know, they want, they want to speak about this topic, but they want to make it as they are answering a Christian. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the whole thing is a fabricated. Everything in Islam is a fabrication. And we are here to prove that Islam is nothing but a fabrication. If there is any Muslim is willing to do so, prove us wrong, please feel free. You know? Uh, I never saw a Muslim is saying something truthful ever. I don't know what to say. Maybe I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. You have to prove me wrong in order to be wrong. Uh, I will show you a comment made by a Muslim. Let me see. This Abdul, he wrote this. Read with me carefully, please.
do you really realize that there is not there is not a single Muslim take you takes you serious uh, Mr. Sayed uh, Dazavukik Dazovic, I think this guy is from Bosnia, maybe. Do you think he, do you really, Muslims, realize that nobody will take what your prophet said about endless penis serious? Because if that's serious, that is a serious illness, my friend. This is not a good promise. So you are telling me what I say is not convincing, but what your prophet says about a long penis, huh? About a woman, each time you have sex with her, Allah, He will put His finger between her legs and He will make her virgin again. That is, that's what people will take it serious. So what your prophet says is what people take serious, and what I say, people will not take it serious, right? But let me tell you something, Mr. Sayyid Zadavich. Tons of Muslims, if not thousands, left Islam because of me. So you, whatever you say, who care? From their fruits, you shall know them. Do you really think that you are a big threat for Islam? Well, obviously I am. Otherwise, you will not write about me. From your room? It doesn't matter from my room, from my window. Like, is that to make a difference? You see, I go and I make a seminar. As an example, in, you know, in, in my trip, one of my seminars was very small. You know, I think I have like uh, maybe a uh, hundred, uh, maybe 40, 50, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. So anyway, right now I have 144. You're a prophet himself, according to Muslims, after many, many years of a preaching Islam, trying to convert people to Islam, he got 70 people, which I believe the number is false because Islam, everything about it is number 70. So yes, I am a bigger threat for Islam. Thousands of people, millions of people watch my videos and my books. And you are in this ability. Otherwise, you call me and let us see if I am a threat or not. Now, you are calling people coward, but in reality, you never ever show your face. What does have to do with, with you being coward, uh, Abdul? Uh, first of all, the Muslims they say that they have my pictures and they post it in their websites. So if you know how I look like, who is the coward? Number two, you're a prophet. Not only he hide his face, he hide his ass. He run away. Should I show you the reference of your prophet running away, hiding himself? Isn't it your prophet who asked nine years old kid to sleep in his bed so he can escape according to you Muslims? Who is the coward? The one who asked a, a child to, to, to sleep in his bed so a bunch of guys will go inside and they will stab him to death when he is in the bed and he is a child risking the life of a child so he can run away? That is the coward. For me, I don't go in camera for many reasons. Number one, I don't like it. Number two, I'm not interested to be famous. I'm not trying to build a glory for myself. Number three, it's more freedom for me. I go to any Muslim country and I will be in the airport of Saudi Arabia and they will say to me, welcome, sir. If they know who I am, I will never be allowed to enter the country. They will never dare to arrest me because I'm an American citizen. Trump will beat their ass. So who is the coward? I don't think that you are actually an ugly guy. Ugly. Ah, this guy, he's, he really believed that when I say that I'm not a good looking, I mean it. My friend, <laughs> what does this have to do with me being ugly or not? <laughs> okay, this idiot. I don't think even you are ugly. I don't think so. Okay? I think you are very handsome. So why you don't go in the camera? <laughs> you see the, 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 the stupid Abduls, Instead of answering my video, which is exposing Islam, and nobody can refute anything there, he start attacking me in, in, in personal attack. Because what he can say, what he can, he, he can't answer, he can't refute me. So let us talk about him. Why you don't go in camera? Uh, why you don't show yourself? 
uh, why you are not uh, uh, you know what's your what's wrong with you Abdul I do seminars live and hundreds and thousands of people they see me live and they ask me questions I'm not hiding myself and here I keep asking anyone when I invite me to his church please for free but I am not into TV stations not to be famous there's people they spend money to be famous for me I don't care for it I'm not looking for my own glory I don't care for this garbage actually if I show myself I will get a lot more support a lot more donation if you go and see the donation you receive it's very small tiny tiny you know what tiny very tiny all of this because I don't show myself there's people who show themselves they get a lot of donation okay well this is their business good for them so for me I'm not showing myself I don't want to show myself still I show or I don't show you cannot answer me and this is what the topic is about all right the, the 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 debate is about can you answer him not can you see him can you can you Muslim answer me can you debate me you cannot so if you see me or you will not see me actually if you see me is going to be even more horrible because then in the top of the terror of my questions you will see that the terror of seeing me imagine how terror how terrifying to see me my friend that is not a good news for you if you see me so they cannot answer your question they try to divert and to change the direction of the topic to make it about me well, i'm not i'm not claiming to be a prophet allah himself muhammad never saw him you see people they keep saying to muhammad where is your god allah why he don't have a sign the coward Muhammad he says well Allah he refraining from giving a miracle it's it's your God is the coward my God my God don't believe in this cowardness as an example the story of Isa the Muslim according to Islam Isa and his God both are coward according to Islam not according to me your God Allah when he heard the news that the Jews they want to kill Isa what he did do you know what he did he came with an ambulance and he took Isa to the seven heaven which means he ran away with him that is your God is that true is that true so if the Jews are not coming to come Isa, Isa will stay on earth. And now because the Jews are coming to kill Isa, your God Allah, he escaped with Isa and he go to heaven. Who is the coward? And not only that, according to the Muslim stories, that Isa the coward, he asked one of his apostles to take his look. Like, I mean, look at this hero, Captain Isa. Imagine you are a captain of an army or a group or a leader. And then you say to one of your leader who want to die for me and so I can run I mean what a coward you are I never heard of a leader he asked his followers to die for him so he can escape who want to die huh who want to take my look so I can run away because I'm a coward like Allah and you are talking about cowards or should I mention to you the coward Muhammad who was hiding behind behind his army and even though he was not able to escape from a rock broke all his teeth and then he went to Aisha and he put his head between her legs or should I show you Muhammad each time the angel he come to him to speak to him in as in chapter of Al-Fatiha and he hear a sound at night Muhammad he run away the coward if if you are at night and you hear somebody saying to you Muhammad why you run Why you run? Somebody is saying, Muhammad, I would say, okay, yes, I'm here. Who is this? I never heard of a prophet of God, a hero of the Muslims. He hear a sound, he run, he flee. Who is the coward? Let us continue. You called people names just because they don't want to mispresent Islam as you 
and your mental friends ah okay i have mental friends that's a good thing yeah, why why they are mental because they believe that in the heaven there is a tree and this tree have leaves the same as the size of an elephant and it's made from gold and silver because this tree have a butterfly made from gold because the Nile and the Euphrates are coming from under the tree but the tree is in heaven we do not know how the Nile come down on earth huh he said you call James White names and you insulted Rabbi to weave a singer and you said that he is not even a Jew yeah a Christian person he will never defend an evil religion like Islam I'm not calling people names I never call people names this is not a name if I say to you you are stupid you are stupid unless you are smart and then that would be name calling if I say to you, you are dirty and you are dirty you are dirty so I speak about someone he lie and that is not name calling and just for your information you donkey James White is the one who accused us of lying first he said whoever says Islam is Isis he is lying so he is the one who call names for we are saying the truth and he is the liar like your prophet regarding uh, to weave a singer who claimed to be a rabbi he is not a rabbi and I got him busted this guy he said not a single word in the in the Bible in the Old Testament it's mentioned it's mentioned the word that God uh, or let us say he said the word Echad I made a video about it he said the word Echad mean Wahid or one which is false and I showed tons of verses from the Bible showing that the Bible the Old Testament saying that when a man he marry a woman they became Echad so this guy he is a Jew who live in Indonesia and we know that there's many Jews are hypocrite they are doing business business come first money come first God the God money it come first so he live in Indonesia between the Muslims and we know why he is being hypocrite if he say Muhammad is a false prophet he will be killed in two seconds so he you know you, we know exactly what kind of a man he is now and there is no Jew will defend Muhammad and there is no Christian will defend Muhammad for a very simple reason Muhammad he ordered to kill the Christians and the Jews and he killed a lot of both of them so how in the world somebody claimed to be Christian minister or a Jewish rabbi he defend Muhammad unless he is a piece of garbage you see guys when you see Muslims defending someone like James White or this guy to weave a singer then you need to ask yourself are they really Christians or Jews do you think really Muslim they will defend them if they are true Christians or true Jews there is no way when a Muslim he say to a person and he claimed to be Christian that person God bless you that means this person is no Christian and he is working for the devil This is the easiest way to know if a person he is false or truthful. Muslims they will never say to us, you know, uh, God bless you. Now, he continues saying, "You said he is not even a Jew. Yes, he is not even a Jew, because a Jew, a Jew is someone he believe in Moses and he don't believe in any other prophet." After Moses, so why your rabbi to to Weva don't want to believe in Muhammad? Yet he is defending Muhammad and saying he is a prophet. So how he is a prophet, but yet he didn't want to take shahada? So obviously he's a hypocrite. If I believe that Muhammad is a prophet, that means I be, I'm a believer. So why I don't take shahada, convert to Islam? That because he is not a Jew, and he is just a hypocrite, and he is a sellout. He is trying to fool you Muslims and you are a bunch of donkeys. You don't you, you don't get it He's playing you Muhammad is a prophet, but yet he didn't want to convert to Islam. What does that mean? <laughs> don't you ask yourself? It's mean he you know, he's, he's fooling you 
imagine I say to you you are a prophet of God for sure but yet I don't want to convert to your religion what does that mean that's me he don't mean it and he don't believe in it and he is making fun of you uh, please learn some English and get some life out of your room well my English is better than your prophet Arabic who do not even know how to write his name According to your prophet uh, books, or let us say Islamic books, your prophet do not know how to recognize between the word donkey and the word Muhammad if it's written in front of him. So it's very funny that you asking me to learn English, but you don't even speak Arabic, but but you pray to your God in Arabic. And your prophet himself, he asked you to go and learn, but yet he himself, he did not even spend one week learning. They cannot answer me so they try the whole the whole thing is an insult it's a personal insult nobody is asking why Muhammad is not being truthful why Muhammad is a liar why Muhammad he claimed to know where the, where the Sun set if he don't know you see when they say to us in the article that the first lesson we learn from the Prophet Muhammad hmm, is to tell the truth and then we find that Muhammad giving us a bunch of lies about where the sun set uh, you know it, it, you see Muhammad the private life is disgusting as you see he told the Muslims not to have sex with your wife when they have and even not to approach them not to even to get close to them when they have their period but yet he is the one who is forcing his wife in her period to put a sheet between her legs and he fondle her and remember, Muhammad is not a man who have one wife. He have many wives. So there's no excuse. You, you want to tell me he was horny, he didn't want to commit sin, he didn't want to go to different women. That can be maybe if he have only one wife. This guy, he have 13 wives at least and maybe uh, and hundreds of, of uh, six slaves. If not thousands. So what is the point of coming to your wife and saying to her, I want to fundle you? Put something between your legs. So the lie is the Muslims they come with that the Prophet always speak the truth is always a lie. Huh? Muhammad said the best jihad is when you speak reasons of what? True word. Really, this is real jihad to speak to a ruler. You're a prophet. He said, Look at this lie. You're a prophet. Said you have to obey your ruler, even if he steal your money and he whip your back. Even if he steal your money and he whip your back. This is the teaching of Muhammad. Let us see if I can show you the hadith. In English. Let us compare between what is written in the screen there by the Muslims and what written in the hadith all right 
Read with me carefully. <laughs> How we can compare between this statement of Muhammad here, where it says, you will obey the emir, which means your ruler, and carry out his orders, even if your back is a flood, and your wealth is a snatch, you should listen and obey. With this statement we see in the screen here, which one of them is truthful? Any Abdul? You're a prophet is ordering you to obey your ruler even if he is a thief is a liar even if he is a criminal so how this statement here is it truthful which one is the truth do we have any muslim Any Abdul in the bushes? Hey, by the way, somebody says to me, uh, "Come on, Christian Prince, be nice." Christ, he taught us to be nice. This is false. Christ never taught us to be nice. When it's come to the truth, many Christians they have wrong information about Christ. Christ, when it's come to the truth, he is harsh. He is tough. He do not compromise. So don't tell me how to be like a Christ. Christ is the one who flipped tables when the coward, hypocrites, businessmen, the one who worship money over God, they were doing business and they turned the temple of God into a bazaar. That is a Christ. But obviously, many do not know who is a Christ yet. Mistakenly, some Christian they think that to be Christian is to be nice to be Christian is to be merciful loving giving that is not about being nice nice a hypocrite can be nice actually the most nice people are the hypocrite because they give a smile to anyone doesn't matter what he say they agree with everybody they don't have a color they don't have an opinion they don't have a format they don't have a shape they are very flexible right that will make you very nice in the eyes of everyone and they call them open-minded people all right that is a car guys don't give me a stupid text otherwise I will ban you I'm concentrating on a topic and you are asking me is that a car or this is your stomach I mean that's what is that what's wrong with you can't you tell it's a car anyway so the Messiah the Messiah never been nice when it's come to say the truth he called people hypocrites, liars. You are the same as your father, the devil. That is what Christ said. So if you are a Christian and you think that is to say to someone nice words will make you Christian, that is a false statement. You have to say the truth and the truth always is painful. All right. What do you say to people that claim Quranic Arabic is different from the classical? No, the, the classical Arabic is Quranic Arabic, you know, because this is the classical is coming is coming from the old uh, traditional Arabic. This is the classical, and Quran is one is uh, Quran is not a language came by itself. Quran is 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 what the people used to speak at that time anyway. Like if there is a single word in the Quran is not used by the Arab and, and this is one of the funny things about Muslims They say to you the first rules of Islam in Arabic. It was the Quran or let us say the grammar. That's false Quran itself is full of mistakes. It's it's the whole book is a mistake and The Quran itself is using Arabic words But not all the time there's many words are not Arabic in the Quran and this is why Muslims do not know what it's mean so if the Muslim they will say Quranic language is Arabic language and it is higher than the standard Arabic language Then they need to explain to us why the Quran is not clear The reason for the Quran not to be clear because Quran is a confusing book is not using a clear language and because 
let us say the language of the Quran is extremely stupid it's not written by someone he knows what he is talking about you see when when uh, 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 when I write my book uh, you know I, we do proofreading for a very simple reason because it might be because you know English is my second language uh, maybe I'm not making it clear to the uh, to the one who is going to read it so I have I need the help of somebody uh, just to be sure that this is uh, uh, it makes sense based on the language even though I'm, I'm making sense based on my understanding I know what I'm talking about but the language I'm using is not a qualified enough to reach out or to deliver the idea and this is exactly what Muhammad he is suffering from for me I use a proofreading to make my book clear and if there is some any clear sentence the proofreader who is a professional or let's say qualified for this business he will fix it now Muhammad he got a lot of stupid things no one in the world will say it in Arabic and if there is anyone here he speak Arabic you can call me right now and I will show you how stupid the Quran is in Arabic Quran is the book of errors language errors grammar errors spelling errors uh, actually look the first word in the Quran is what is this word this is the first word in the Quran Bism in the whole Arabic language we never heard of a word it's called Bism there is nothing it's called Bism the true word is B ism B ism there's ba and there is alif and that will make it correct word what is bism where is the letter here is gone it's gone disappear they say to us that it's gone because that will make the singing for the Quran easier I mean you can sing it as you wish but you don't take off a letter You know what I mean? You don't take off a letter. There is no Hamza here. Take it off. So, uh, why you are taking off the letter? Are you are you a person who is willing to change the language? Do we have Alif there? Do we have a Hamza there? Yes, we do. So where they go? Where were you? Where they disappear? So they say to you, they say to you that this is what it is, but the fact it is not. Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> Anyone? So from the beginning of the Quran, from the start of the Quran, there is something wrong. Can nikah mean marriage? No, we showed you from a Muslim website that the word nikah mean literally mean intercourse. The word nikah mean sexual intercourse have nothing to do with the word marriage you know uh, 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 you told me yesterday uh, Rene that you have a Muslim you know want to call me what happened to this Muslim he's coming is he coming what is the Muslims want to call me because we want people to see what the Muslims really trying to say to us and what they are trying to accomplish by those conversations when a Muslim he talk about Islam what he what he say we want to see the opinion of the Muslims about their religion if any of you have a Muslim in his list please invite them so we can see together what Muslims 
always speak about what the Muslims try to say to us how Muslims can respond to what we say or you know maybe uh, maybe Christian Prince is not telling the truth this is why I want Muslims to be with us here so you guys can see with your own eyes what Islam teach and what Islam made out of them made out of the Muslims <clears throat> uh, we have somebody trying to call so call back please look like we missed your uh... <coughs> call back I hope he's a Muslim you know Quran as a language is wrong Quran as science is wrong Quran as teaching is wrong Quran as a name is wrong even the word Quran is not Arabic word is not correct uh, why I want to contact him the, the person who want to debate me he can debate me he do not need me to contact him I am here he can come and he can debate me he can prove me wrong all right I'm not I'm not going to contact anyone because uh, first of all if you you know like uh, uh, I don't know who is this guy you're talking about anyway uh, but I have no problem with contacting I mean to to debate anyone and we keep saying anyone want to call us call us if you want he's welcome if you don't want it's up to him this is his business no polos polos which is paul is uh, a messenger of the messiah according to the quran and according to the tafsir the muslims because of their stupidity they are copy paste people they keep saying that Paul is the one who corrupt the Bible, but not. And you know the question here. Let me ask you a question: If Paul is the bad person in Christianity, why Muhammad never said Paul was bad? Anyone knows? Anyone knows why was why Paul was not a bad Christian or bad bad person, or never mentioned by Muhammad? So. What Muslims try to say to us that they are the one who knows about Paul, but their prophet was an idiot. He never heard of him. You know what I mean? And the same stories goes for other claims. Like the Muslim, they say to you, the name of a prophet Muhammad mentioned in uh, Isaiah, uh, mentioned in the in the, uh, the Song of Songs. Why Muhammad did not say in the time of the Jews, open the Song of Songs and read my name? Do you understand what I'm saying? If Muhammad's name is in the Song of Song, it means it was there during the life of Muhammad. Why Muhammad did not say, hey, open my, the book, your book, and see my name, it's there. So Muhammad do not know about it. Allah do not know about it. Why Allah did not say in the Quran, I spoke about Muhammad in the Song of Songs, in the book of Isaiah. I spoke about Muhammad in the Gospel of Isa. Open Matthew. Huh? How come Muhammad never heard of those things? But the Muslim today, they knew about it. Because simply, the Muslims are so desperate trying to find a place for their prophet. That's the whole story. Otherwise, you tell me why Muhammad... You see, even Muhammad himself, he said that my name mentioned... As the following Muhammad he said that only the Messiah he mentioned his name hello hello yes hello yes who's calling hello hi CP How are um, you? hello yes I hear Can you, you. Uh, actually your, your voice is cutting hello I hear you my friend go ahead okay um, actually, I wanted to ask you about your book, uh, uh, new book uh, uh, titled Allah and Sex. <laughs> uh, uh, 
uh, about uh, does that book include any sexual tips about uh, how to get power of 40 men <laughs> how like what? mohammed did <laughs> how what does that book include tips about getting power of 40 men the power of 40 men 40 men 40 40 men Oh, uh, 40 men. Well, you know, the, the book is a book. It's like, you know, it's not about those things only. It's about everything. So there's tons of information, um, you know, uh, about many things. It's it's a, it's a, like it's a, like a treasure uh, of information mentioned in Islamic books, and most of it you never heard. This is, this is nothing compared to what you will learn in this book. There's a lot of information you never heard of. All right. The power of 40 men is nothing compared to what you will see in this book. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is nothing. Just wait. You when you when you get the book, you will see what I'm talking about. They will be surprised, and the Muslim themselves, they will be surprised about what they will find in this book because, especially that everything in the book is not in my from my book. It's from their books, which means all the reference, all the words, everything there, is coming from their books. Nothing from my own. My book is just collecting those information, exposing the stupidity of Islam. And the the perverted minded of of uh, of Muhammad who concentrate, and he focus in, in, in on sex, you see, uh, you know the Muslims always, they try to to provide us with his, his their own version of uh, uh, of teaching which does not exist anywhere. Uh, like as an example, if we go and read the uh, the Quran translation, uh, chapter fifty five, uh, verse number fifty six. All right. If we go here, let us see. <clears throat> This is the translation of uh, chapter fifty-five, verse number fifty-six, uh, made by Muslims. It says, "In them, medians with advert gallants, and." followed by men or by jinn before them now when and if lowered okay then the other guy he have different translation in them are medians of restrained gallants whom no human has touched before them or genie what does that mean touch huh? i don't know what is that upon throne this is a different translation Origins. upon thrones are the women who they are they, they uh, who don't Gaz at men. We have men, women, guys here. They don't look at men. They don't. They don't. Women, other women, they are bad. Those women, they don't look at men. So what they are there for? Except their husbands. And before them are in touch by any man or engineer. I mean, what does that mean? Go down. You will see how the translation. Keep going down, and then suddenly you will find a translation here is getting them busted. Look at this guy. Wherein both will be. Those medians restraining their gallants upon their husbands, <laughs> whom, whom, what, whom, whom, what, huh, whom, what, who, who, nobody, nobody has opened their vagina with sexual intercourse. Do you see it, Abdul? Abdul, the one is listening and watching. Do you see it? This is your Muslim translation. Yeah. So the Quran bringing us a God. Who promise us that those women nobody open yet their vagina? That is God. So, if you want to read the Islamic translation, this is what one of my uh, uh, of uh, what my book does. It provide provide you with things never been translated translated to Arabic, which means there is no way for you to learn it because it's not exist in English, it's not in exist in French, it's not exist in German. Those are pure Arabic books. You will never have them, and they will never be translated because they are full of shame. And the Muslim, they will hide them. Like if you go in Ibn Kathir in English, you will find that Ibn Kathir in English is totally different from Ibn Kathir in Arabic. So, uh, uh, my book is going to provide information people never heard of, of with an accurate translation, as the best as I can. So this is what what this book is going to do, and I believe this book is going to be. Uh, a top seller in uh, in uh, you know in topic about uh, sex in Islam because as I said there's nobody before uh, wrote about this topic or even spoke about it and then we will try to translate the book to German to other languages you know 
so people they will learn more and more about the stupidity of this god if there's anything my friend i can help you with yeah i have uh, other question about uh, surah 5149 uh, is 5149 surah yeah okay. and it is uh, talking about uh, we, and we have created in pairs right so who is we is it allah and angels creating or is allah or you are talking about uh, chapter four are you getting four 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 the no the chapter 5149 about that uh, 5149 sorry so again 51 51 or, 14 uh, 51 49. okay 51 49 and, uh, okay okay and we have created in pairs something like that i see yeah well you know the uh, 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 there is no problem with saying we created everything from pair if this is like a metaphorical thing and it is uh, you know just to tell you that we made things uh, no, actually the, there is uh, if you, if you see there is one big problem it is saying it is Allah speaking here, right? Yes. So it is saying we. So does it include Allah and angel creating, or is it Allah and another Allah creating? Are you getting my point? No, you know we, we don't want to do what the Muslims do when they speak about the Bible. You know we will not make things look differently from what it is. So it says, and from everything we created. All right. So I will take it that Allah saying. No, no. What? No, what I am. Trying to say, it is saying we have created right. So there, it is not only uh, Allah is creating. Someone else is also there. Where Allah is creating. Well, the so, Muslim, no, no. You see, the Muslim they will say to you here that uh, the uh, Allah he use here the term of uh, uh, like uh, uh, us, us. So he don't mean that there's we did. He will say us. But here the problem we will have about this halakna is what the Muslim they say that the one or some of them they say that the one who made mary bread met is the angel jibril and then that will be a problem because now we have two creators then add to that the quran confirm that jesus he created from the mud uh, a bird that will make now make now we have a three creators so according to the quran based on this interpretation allah is a creator Jibril created Jesus. Jesus created the bird. So now we have many creators. Three. One is a human. One is an angel. And one supposed to is God. However, the verse by itself, the Muslim, they will say to you, that verse speaking, Allah saying that we created is like his majesty. You know, he, he, he make himself uh, uh, as equal to, uh, you know, a statement like uh, when you say in, in, in the Bible Elohim you know but that is not mm, that is not really true. yeah but that is not a true because uh, Allah himself if if Allah he, he give himself a majestic name by saying by adding we that's mean when he make when he say it is he he is insulting himself because why you are saying it is he when you should say it is we always so either we say it is we because this is the right way to present yourself or you say it is he if we go right now and we search in the Quran uh, or the word he you know it is he and we search in English Yusuf Ali as an example it is he okay let us see in exact so this V part is mistranslation or something chapter like two, that. Chapter two, verse number twenty-nine. It is He who has created for you all things. Okay. So if we present the God Almighty as a majestic name, then He must be insult. For we should say always, He should say always. It is. It is we. Are you getting my point? Mm -hmm. So why yeah. in one place it's appear it is us or it is we and then in another place it says it is he Same time if Allah is the one is talking how he say about himself. It is he And if it is okay mm -hmm. to say about himself as a third party It is he or second party then why he don't always use it this way. I mean what uh, here here Why we don't say it is we? Who has it created for you? Why it is he? 
it is he it doesn't make sense unless it is someone is speaking about God and then yeah, he say exactly. yeah so obviously the one the, 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 this verse is written by somebody speaking about God and that is mostly Waraq ibn Nufal, the, the, the real father of Muhammad. He was saying, it is he, the one who created everything for you. But Actually, I spoke about this with one of my Muslim friends. Uh, he told me that I have to learn Arabic to understand this verse. Yeah, English, English, uh, English version is not uh, accurate. Yes, English version is not accurate, but still, I, you know, we are. for me, it doesn't matter. I can read in Arabic, right? So... It is he, you know. Uh, 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 it is he. It is he. It is he. So why, why it is he when he should say it is we? And you know, you you talk, like you, you mentioned the, the Arabic Quran and etc. If Allah is using the language of the Arab, because the Arab the one it is say it is we as a king, or even the English ones or the German or etc. They say it is we. So why Allah is using the terms of and and the conditions of a human? If the human they make himself majestic, Allah trying to make himself majestic is God. You know why he is using mm -hmm. the same terms of majestic for himself, which is used by God uh, by by a human before him. So he's copying from them. And if I say it is we, is it really making me greater? I mean that is stupid because if I am God. It doesn't matter if I say um, I am. You know, when Moses spoke to, to 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 our God, what God he said to him, he said, "It's I am." I am. Yeah. yeah. That's simple. That's it. Because there is no need to say whatever I say to you. There's no words can describe me. There's nothing can uh, uh, can put me in. A, there's no name can contain me. No name can describe me. No name can uh, all all the names. Actually, in the Bible, our God don't have any name. Specific name on like other religions. Yes, in the in the Bible, there, there is many people they think that when the Bible says that God He says His name as an example, His name is Elohim, or His name etc. Those are yeah, not names. Those yeah. are not names. You know, you call me yeah. God. You call me my name. I am. You call me the one who exists by Himself. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. Those are not names. Those are words in our language trying to describe who is God. But there's no words can describe him for who he is for his glory and no names can contain his glory so when we say the messiah the messiah is not a name the messiah is a description for what this person can do the same as jesus the same is even adam adam is not a name adam is not a name People, you know, like they think there's not even a single name in the Bible is a name. All of them, they are a statement. Uh, they have some meanings in yeah. Hebrew. Yes. It's, you see, in, in religion, what people don't want to, want to understand, uh, even when we say Muhammad, Muhammad is not a name. Muhammad is a statement which means the praised one. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I also wanted to ask you about this. Uh, is, is it the correct meaning, the praised one or... Uh... Uh, Zakir next says it means the sweet one. <laughs> the sweet one, uh, Muhammad is very sweet. Yeah, I <laughs> no, actually, in one of my uh, YouTube videos, I saw Zakir next saying Muhammad means the sweetest, the sweet one, something like that. Yeah, well, Zakir and Nike have his own, uh, uh, they are lying, I think, <laughs> his own audience, you know, high, high drugs people. They always, they always clap before <laughs> you even finish the sentence. And you know, the most important for us. It is not if Allah He say it is He it is we, it is the stupid things He so He say, you know, because uh, as an example, as an example, when when we have a God and the God He say such a statement that Allah He ask the mountains and the heaven to uh, the mountain in heaven, <laughs> yeah, He talked to them, you know, uh, to to accept the trust. Can you, you know, give me words about this? Uh, any, uh, I mean, uh, any words about the mountain in heaven? Yeah, hold is it on. in Hadith or Quran? No, no, we are talking about the Quran. The the uh, it it says here in Aradna al-Amana ta'ala al-Samawati wal-Ardi wal-Jibala fa-abayna an yahmilna hu wa ashfaqna minha wa hamala al-Insana inna hu kana zaluma jahula. Chapter thirty-three, verse number seventy-two. If you read the translation, you will see how stupid this Quran is. It's impossible that the one is talking here is God, all right. And if there is any Muslim, 
listening please call me and so we can see if this is how, how that can happen look we did indeed offer the trust to the heaven and the earth and the mountains but they refused to undertake it being afraid therefore but man undertook it he was indeed unjust and foolish like what the heck what does that mean do we have any muslim want to explain to us forget about allah saying it is he it is we it is uh, uh, michael jackson I, I don't care no more i want to know how allah he offered the heaven and the earth and the mountains a trust and they refused Does the mountains speak there or what? <laughs> well, you know, to say the mountains they refuse and the and the heaven they refuse and the earth they refuse. That's mean they are living creatures and they have a brain and they make decisions. You know, so what it does mean? Any Muslim can explain to us what so they this refuse. Is, uh, actually, CP, I I think I heard this story in uh, Hindus. Uh, some in uh, in their heaven, the uh, sheep is sitting on mountain and speaking. It, it is uh, something similar like that. Everything Muhammad, Muhammad he have, it. yes, every Muhammad he have, he is copying from someone else. Every there is no, there is nothing there. It is not even that black stone. Copy. Even that black stone, you know about Hindu or is uh, they have that black stone. Even yeah, that yeah, is yeah. copied, uh, and it is a sexual stone too. Everything Muhammad he have, it's coming from somewhere. You know, the the whole world. You see, mankind. Uh, you know, our like our culture is not isolated. Like you know, if you go. Uh, in America, you will find very similar st stories. Uh, the Indian believe in it, the uh, Chinese believe in it. It's very similar. So, human being, uh, all of them they are coming from one family. So, it's very normal that we have many things to share as a stories or history or let us say a belief. But Muhammad always he copy things he himself cannot explain. Now, if we ask a Muslim to explain to us this verse, what he will say? Allah, He offered the trust. <laughs> To the earth and the heaven offer did Allah offer the trust to, to Adam what was it an offer Muslims is that an offer did Allah ask Adam if you like him to be created or not and then Adam he says you know Allah yeah create me no problem what does that mean did Allah offer Adam to, to believe in him or not there's no offer here according to the Quran which is a story stolen from the other books that uh, Allah he created Adam and he told him don't do this and do, do don't do that this is not an offer you created him without asking him and then you give him rules you did not ask him if you like it or not that's mean you are not offering you are forcing things so you break the law we beat we you know we we uh, we beat you we uh, we punish you we send you to hell etc so there's no offer and here how we can compare between a human and mountains and earth and heaven and what it does mean that mountains and earth is it the earth is the mountains and the mountains is the earth is it the earth is you know contain the mountains and the mountains is part of it obviously in the Quran it says that Allah he placed mountains over the earth and it's not part of it and when Allah he offered the trust to the earth how the earth respond do we have any Muslim in the bushes when I say to us how how the mountains respond to Allah what what happened exactly and the one who you know who uh, uh, uh who accept Allah trust the Quran call him unjust and the fool so what Allah is saying in this verse that the mountains the heaven and the earth they were smart they didn't accept my trust <laughs> you know but the, the human being he was a fool it says he was indeed unjust and foolish so mountains and earth have conscious consciousness just like humans. Yeah, <laughs> they can think and uh, take decisions. Well, you know, isn't it Allah in the other in the verse in the Quran? He said that we uh, we order the, the the sun and and the, the moon uh, and etc. Like whatever we create to come. Willingly yeah, I saw in, and, and, and willingly. I saw in one of your video that 
that uh, sun go under the uh, throne of allah <laughs> yeah uh, anyway let yeah. us let us give a chance for other callers thank you my friend for calling and i hope muslims will call and we will have more more people to yeah cp i have one more and that's uh, that is one more important question uh, okay. can i ask you sure sure this my last question okay, okay thank you uh, about uh, you i have i have uh, learned one important uh, verse from you about quran uh, it is uh, uh, something like uh, will uh, do uh, something like uh, do you believe another uh, creator except allah something like that do you do you remember say, say again i could not hear it say again do you something want... like uh, you believe in another creator you 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 believe in another creator except uh, something like that i am not something i not... do you for you do do you forget the best of the creator something like that uh, you, you, we are talking about ahsan al khaliqin yeah al khaliq yeah there is there is more than one creator in yeah well we, we we spoke about that already because the quran we see when the muslims they come with their interpretation saying as an example that jesus was created by uh, uh jibril who made mary horny and that made the uh, the sperm which allah he put inside her before he created her uh, make the baby happen this is their uh, you know uh, one of the interpretation I, by that actually i wanted to uh, uh, the important thing is uh, that proves that there is more than one creator in quran right because yeah, there is yeah this verse confirmed yes mean there is yes. Uh, someone else who also, also can create yes. so my question is uh, why don't uh, any christian debaters ask this question to muslim why i never saw this or is, is this any uh, mistranslation or something like that I want to ask I you. cannot speak for others but for me I asked this question you know that's not you because know. this is this can uh, defeat islam in just uh, one second uh, this and uh, because muslims claim that islam is the only monotheist religion and we don't have like two god three god something like that so this verse will defeat them in within a second yeah you know the muslim here they will say to you that uh, it says it's a metaphorically that Allah is the best of the creator aren't you like you know don't you know that uh, Microsoft they created window you know yeah but this is not about creation you know creation in the mean of religion is a creating life you know anything else is not a creation according to the religion like the Quran itself give definition for what is a creation so the Quran says are you going to worship someone who cannot even create a fly so the the Quran uh, 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 give us clearly what is a creation is not about creating a bicycle this is not a creation this is uh, an idea you know and you make it you put it parts together but giving life is a creation chapter life. 22 yeah chapter 22 verse number 73 as an example Allah himself is making the rules of who we should believe in as God read with me carefully O oh man, here is a parable set forth. Listen to it. Those on whom beside Allah ye call cannot create even a fly. If they all met together for the purpose. So if all of them, those people you are, or, or those idols or those gods you, you worship, or bring them all together and ask them to make a fly, they will not be able to do so. Okay, based on this, Jesus is God. Because Jesus not not only make a fly, uh, created a uh, he created bird, a bird, something. Right. So uh, yeah. So the qualification for you to be to be God is to create a fly. Never and you know. I never saw this. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. No one mentioned this. No one. No. I never saw this from any Christian debate. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, you know, the more it's something very strong point we can use again against Muslims. The the more the more the discussion come, the more you know like. Uh, you know what I have in my head is like a big library, and you have to give me the question so I I will grab the file. You know what I mean? If we if we don't if there is no need to talk about it, then I don't talk about it. And this is why it's important to have a Muslim trying to debate us because then many things will come to refute what he say. All right. Anything else? No. Thank you, Sipi, for right. taking your time and thank answering you. me. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for calling. God yeah. bless you. God bless. Take care. All right. If there is any Muslim would like to call, please feel free.
we would like to hear you. Uh, uh, you know, the Quran, the Quran is the best way to defeat the Quran. There's no better book can defeat the Quran more than the Quran because the Muslim, if you use a different book, they will they will play all kind of tricks. Oh, this is weak. Oh, this is etc. Oh, it doesn't say that. Oh, where did you get this from? Oh, who said that this uh, uh, this scholar is the one we believe? We don't believe in the scholar. We believe in the Prophet Muhammad and uh, uh, Allah. So now we give them Allah what's saying. Your God Allah saying, the one who can create a fly is the one we can call him a creator. So when the other verse says Allah is the best of the creators, Allah was comparing himself to who? To Jesus? He's saying he, okay, Jesus he create, I am a creator, but I can do better. And who care if you can, if, and you know, when, if Allah is the one saying I am the best of the creators, can we take what he says seriously? Yesterday, uh, we have our broadcast under the title is, like, is it enough? Like, is, is, is Allah is God because he say he's God? I can say I'm God too. So you witnessing to yourself is a stupid witnessing. Even in the court is not accepted. Imagine I write a document and I sign it that you did borrow from me a million dollar. The judge would laugh at me. He said, you would say to me, you have to bring me a document signed by him, not by you. So now what the Muslims they have to us, they have a document signed by them saying that Allah said that he is God and that is the proof that he is God. Where is the logic in this? Where is the proof that Allah is God? Just because Allah he said he is God, that will make him God? And if Allah is God, how he says such a stupid thing? He forgot that he mentioned that Jesus is a creator. You see, the Muslim, they will say to you, yes, Jesus, he created, but by the leave of Allah, it doesn't matter as long I can create by the leave of Allah. Or And what is the proof that this is by the leave of Allah? Because Allah said so. <laughs> Do you have even a proof that Allah exists? Your prophet Muhammad never spoke to him. Never witnessed him, never heard his voice. All what Muhammad knows, according to you Muslims, a guy, he came to him in the shape of a human being. And he told him, do this and do that. He did not even say to him, I am Jibreel. The one who told Muhammad that this guy must be Jibreel, it was the cousin of 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 the wife. Which is maybe the father of Muhammad at the end. Did the angel came to Muhammad and says to him, I am Jibreel? He did not even say to him, I am an angel. And based on all reference made by Muslims, Muhammad is not trustworthy to listen to what he's saying. If we go here, let us see. imagine this is written by Muslims collected by Muslims preserved by Muslims read with me carefully once the Prophet was bewitched so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done how we can trust such a man that he saw an angel as you see, he imagined that he has done things. You know what done mean? It's mean this guy, he cannot differentiate between reality and fiction. And fake. He think he done something. He don't see a dream. He think he done something. So if Muhammad now, in this situation, and he come to me and he says, today I heard Quran. How many Quran Muhammad he received when he is in that situation, which is obviously proof that Muhammad is suffering from mental illness. And the Muslim, they blame black magic. You see, in the old days, anything can happen to a human being, like start saying stupid things, acting stupid. 
they don't believe that he were uh, uh, you have a mental illness no they believe that there is somebody make a spell on you people are naive and you know stupid belief is is controlling everything in their life so they think when somebody even normal illness they think it's a spell as an example uh, uh, when a child he fell down in the ground and he have a, a scissor he have like you know uh, he's he's shaking he is etc what they think they would think it's a magic somebody did magic but this is have nothing to do with magic but this is how they think at that time and this is additional proof that muhammad is not healthy and he is suffering from a bad mental illness you know so uh hold on okay All right. So Muhammad is suffering from mental illness, and he have no idea uh, that this is this is uh, this is a kind of a brain uh, chemical issue. He think, and Muslims around him, they think that he is suffering from uh, magic. Somebody make a spell. Uh, and he, you know, he is a victim of a magic. And then Muhammad, he claimed that two angels, they came to speak to him, you know, and they, uh, 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 you know, like they discuss his case, like what happened to this guy? Allah, he sent two angels to fix him. And how they fixed him? <clears throat> Supposedly, now Muhammad is, uh, finally the help came. They went and they, you know, he told Muhammad, the angels, they told him that there is somebody, he is hiding a clump of hair in a well. Go and find it. And that supposedly would destroy the magic. I mean, who in the world want to believe in this garbage? Same time, the Quran says that Muhammad is protected from mankind and from genie. Mankind. And genie so how Muhammad was controlled by a genie which is a devil huh do we have any Muslim here <clears throat> read with me here carefully in chapter 5 verse number 67 It says, and Allah will defend thee from men of mischief, for Allah guide not those who reject faith. Okay, how the man who his name is uh, uh, suppose, supposedly Lubaid ibn al-Asam was able to place magic on Muhammad if the Quran promised Muhammad that Allah, he will protect him from any harm Can happen against him. Do you see it? And all of us in the top of that, we know that Muhammad, everything he spoke of happened to him. As an example, Muhammad he said, if you eat seven ajwa, that will protect you from poison and will protect you from magic. And Muhammad, he died by poison, and he was infected by magic, according to Muslims. So how the Quran says Allah will defend you from mankind? Was the Ubaid ibn al-Asam from the mankind? He was. Hmm?
and that explains why Muhammad always he says stupid things because he is suffering from mental illness. As an example, read with me here carefully uh, the teaching of Muhammad. You see, sometimes the Muslim they try to present them their their prophet as a as he is a, a man of wisdom. Look at this uh, look at this, uh, this at this piece of wisdom. Uh, the prophet said, he should not cease to pray unless he hears a sound, perceive or a, or a smell of a passing wind. This is a prophet teaching. We are talking about farting here. We are talking literally about farting. And the prophet wisdom is, you should not stop your prayer unless you hear the fart and you smell the fart. So if your fart is a silence one, like, it's okay. I mean, what is that? When Jesus was teaching the people to love their enemy, to bless their enemy, to the one who asked you for your, your code, give him your address. The one who asked you one step, give him 1,000. Muhammad was teaching you, when you hear your fart, if it is not loud and does not, you do not feel the smell, continue. That is your prophet. So how you can accept how you can accept such a thing? So you speak about someone you think he is, uh, 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 you know, coming from a sky, but then he speak about something very trashy, and the language is used is not even a professional, and the topic itself is exposing what this is all about. Do we have any uh, any Abdul in the bushes? And you, by the way, Abdul, you can call me, and if you fart and nobody hear it, I mean it's okay. That is a prophet of God who is teaching us about silent fart. There is everything, everything about Muhammad. Make me believe strongly that Muhammad is suffering from mental illness. Look what the Prophet said. He should not return from prayer unless he hear the sound or perceives a smell of fart. What the heck? What about Muhammad saying that Shaitan, when he hear the Adan, he run and he start farting? Is that a wisdom of a guy he have like, uh, the, uh, you know, the Muslim, he said to me, if you remember, the Muslim guy who left me this message, he said, do you think people, they take you seriously? He said to me, do you think really Christian Prince, people, they will take you seriously? I want to ask you, Abdul, do you think really we can take your prophet seriously? When he say that shaitan, when he hear the adhan, he fart. He is a shaitan, but yet he is farting now. And why he fart? The logic of Muhammad is amazing. He fart because he don't want to hear the voice or the sound of the adhan. That mean each time the Muslim... Let me find the hadith. But the Muslim, they will not say we are making things up. Read with me, please. Muslim, this is not my, my this is not me speaking. This is the wisdom, the, the, the prophet of wisdom. This is Sahih Muslim and this is a Sahih Hadith. All right. When Satan hear the call to prayer, he return he turn backs and break wind. Okay, let us imagine this. Hold on. 
let me use my art you know me I am an artist by nature all of us we are Arab we are artists yeah we beat the Roman with art so this is Shaitan this is mr. Shaitan this is Abdul here Abdul huh? is saying Allahu Akbar Allah Akbar bigger okay Akbar okay this Abdul now is saying Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar now Shaitan is here this is Shaitan Shaitan he turned his back this is his ass huh this is his ass he turned his back and he start farting Boof. 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 that is the prophet teaching this is a true story and the purpose of this that he don't want to hear the voice of the prior I mean obviously Muhammad is a prophet who can deny that this is not even a question man look at this look at this wisdom the poor shaitan I don't know how much gas he have I don't know how much gas he can afford what he will do when the Muslims now they are using electric speakers in the Middle East that explain why the Middle East smells so bad I thought maybe because the garbage in the street I thought because the city is not taking care of uh, you know the, the the roads no that explained by the science of the Prophet this is mr. Shaitan is farting and this is a true story so if we call Zakir Naik now and we ask him how he can explain to us this Zakir Naik will say <clears throat> uh, brother Thitter the Thitter did not kick with him in the book of Tahith Muslim Hadith number 389A it said that when Thitan he listened to the call of the prayer Allah Akbar Allah Akbar they thought he bent over and he thought farting like <coughs> she's asking is that logical my friend let us assume that your husband is singing and you don't like his song what do you do you turn the loudspeaker you turn the radio you turn the TV Satan don't have any of those so what he do he fought I think this is very logical and it's proven by science there is a scientist from the pan his name Yama I do lie Yama Yama I do lie Yama very well known from the pan he proved that Satan always fought when he hear the prayer of Allah thank you very much isn't it amazing so shaitan he wanna overcome the sound of Allahu Akbar he fought to cover Allah word and imagine how much insulting that is to God what Muhammad he just said that the second you say Allah fart come out there's a connection there is a connection The second you say Allah, Allah, fart is in the other side. Is that really what you Muslims believe? You say Allah, He do fart.
we have one of two choices either the Muslims have to accept that Muhammad was a madman say stupid things teaching stupid things or he is a liar which one you accept this is not a teaching coming from someone is wise and he have any kind of little tiny wisdom you know uh, uh, we might say in the old days people they have a belief no 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 this is not you see why why Abraham did not say such a stupid thing Abraham came long before Muhammad why Moses did not say such a stupid thing Moses came long before Muhammad why all the names we heard of they never have you ever heard anyone even any any king as an example Alexander the Great came long before Muhammad many 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 president many sorry kings princes we heard of them in history we never heard of them saying such a stupid thing the stupidity of Muhammad goes beyond imagination this guy obviously his brain is down in his stomach in his belly in his ass Otherwise, where he get this idea that if you call Allah, Shaitan will fart. I mean, he is trying to picture for us Shaitan as a little tiny stupid idiot, and he is like a jerk, you know. And this Shaitan, he can do nothing about your prayer except farting. Not only that. There is a hadith, I don't know if I can find it for you, says that when a Muslim he pray, shaitan he come from his back and he take a hair from your anus and he make you fart. Let me see if I can find it. Can you believe it that shaitan will take hair from the anus of the Muslim and the purpose to make him fart? And this is Muhammad teaching. Let us see. Maybe we will not find this hadith. Hmm. I will try to find it. Hold on. If I cannot find it in English, at least I will find it in Arabic. All right, let us try again. I will try a different, the same hadith actually, but different, different way of report. Maybe we can find it here. No, um, anyway, this is the hadith. Let us try one more time. All of those about shaitan trying to make you fart when you pray. All those hadith in front of us. But I'm trying to find the hadith about shaitan taken here from the anus of the Muslim. Okay, read this one. This one is a close, but not exactly. Look at this one. This is this is what do. This is what do. Guys, is the screen good for you? Huh? Can you read the text with me? Read carefully. Allah Messenger said, Who is talking? Allah Messenger. Satan's comes to you. In Salat, which means a prayer, Salat means prayer, and blows air in his bomb. His bomb, bomb, bomb of who? 
in your bomb in your bomb like you are Muslim now and you are praying huh and your ass is up so what shaitan he do he come in your back and he say <laughs> and now that will make you Abdul think the feeling that you are farting so the Prophet advising you by his amazing wisdom you should not leave the prayer unless he hear it and he smell it this is a prophet of God imagine imagine God forbid forgive me Lord Jesus saying that Can we compare? This is a prophet of God. So the Muslim, he says to me, Christian Prince, do you think people are taking you seriously? Well, do you think this is seriously? Can you take a prophet like this seriously? He's advising you that if you feel wind in your ass, that because shaitan, he blow wind in your anus. Is that a true? Huh? I mean that is amazing and that is a lot of knowledge we have to admit do we have any Abdul would like to call us And you know, we can mention tons of stories, but the one about shaitan taking from your anus here, I believe it's the best. I wish I can find it in English. Really, I, I wish I can find it in English because this is this is really funny. Uh, I, I wish even I can make it as a cartoon. It's going to be a hilarious cartoon, you know. Uh, imagine, you know, shaitan is taking hair from an anus of a Muslim. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Any Abdul? I'm sure like many of you is like convincing now. Or look at this wisdom here. Muhammad is telling us what is going to disturb our prayer or destroy our prayer he said the three things will destroy your prayer a woman a donkey and a black dog i mean that's extreme wise teaching of the prophet to make my wife or your wife or your mother and my mother and your mother equal to a donkey and a dog And why a donkey will make my prayer disturb? He will cut the connection of the internet between me and God. I see we have some Muslims in the chat. I don't know why they don't call. Well, if you are a Muslim, please feel free to call me. And we can change the topic just for your sake. No problem. Any Muslim would like to call? We can change the topic totally, no problem. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, CP, how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing, my friend? Good, so I just had a question. Uh, you know, When you look at Islam, most of it seems to be just rituals and stupid stories. Is there anything in Islam which is just good for the sake of being good? Does it tell you, is there any command that's just good? Like Jesus says, love your enemies, love your neighbor as yourself. Is there anything in Islam like that? Well, the, the, if, if there is a good command in Islam, is the ones which is stolen from the Bible or from the uh, teaching yeah. of Jesus. You know, there is some places where it sounds logical and there's no problem with it. 
but mostly it's just a copy of what uh, either Jesus said or the Old Testament said. Nothing new, you know. Uh, but uh, but Muhammad, what he came with as Muhammad, it is a joke, you know. Yeah, yeah it's uh, just rituals and uh, yeah. prayers, making pilgrimages, pagan practices. To... Everything in his teaching, it doesn't make sense. It's a stupid. And you know, like you know, Shaitan, he's sleeping your nose. I mean, who in the world is going to believe in this garbage? You know, uh, yeah. uh, or Shaitan, he piss in your ears. You know, Shaitan, yeah. Shaitan will piss in my ears. What does that mean? And Abdul, you know, and Abdul have a have an explanation for what Muhammad say. I mean, what does this mean? I had another question. Uh, in zakat, what is zakat only for uh, for Muslims when you give the alms to Muslims only, or is it to zakat, people in general? Zakat first yeah. is not an Islamic teaching. This is something Muhammad he stole from the Bible. The zakat is what the Christians and the Jews they pay as ten percent uh, uh, as their income. This is the, the word zakat in itself is not even an Arabic word. Uh, Muhammad he was trying to copy from the Jews to establish a religion. You know that the whole story. If you read here in the front of us, it says that Muhammad. Uh, there's a guy he was uh, slept all night and he did not wake up in the morning so the prophet he said that shit that man shaitan he slept uh, shaitan he urinated oh, yeah. in his ears and some muslim yeah, they, might, they might say to you they might say to you uh, uh well he is uh, this is metaphorical that's false my friend that's false because your prophet he told you to sneeze to clean to uh, to uh, look when you do evolution because simply shaitan he sleep in your nose what when you compare it to everything else, it's, you could tell it's, he's saying it's literal. Yeah, you know, yeah, you have you have to read the other stories, uh, uh, and then we will know if it was metaphorical uh, or it, or not. But Shaitan, he sleep in my nose and he piss in my ears. Uh, you know, uh, that is not a metaphorical. How Shaitan sleep in what 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 is the metaphorical of Shaitan sleeping in my nose? Yeah, there's no there's no sort of teaching there so if it was metaphorical you would expect it to be yeah, to have a teaching yeah what, is, that what does that mean if a metaphorical have to have a metaphorical teaching what is the metaphorical yeah. of shaitan sleeping in uh, sleep in my so muhammad you want to teach the muslims why they should yeah. do evolution in certain way and what is that uh, uh, uh how i can convince them that you should do that uh, people are not convinced because how you can put uh, water in your nose i mean this is stupid yeah. Water in your nose? How you can put water in your, your nose? So he said, if you, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you have to blow your nose by water three times. Why? The reason is, explain, because shaitan, he sleep on your nose. What is a metaphorical? This is not about metaphorical. This is about the physical action. Read with it carefully. The prophet said, if any one of you roses in the morning from the sleep, Perform evolution. He uh, he should wash his nose by putting water in it, and then blow it out thrice, which means three times, because yeah. Satan stayed in the upper part of his nose. Not only he is in the nose; it's in the upper part. You see, Satan he don't like the lower part. He like the upper part. Hmm? He could fall out from the lower part. Yeah, how big the Satan, Muslims? How big the shaitan? Let me tell you a story. This is a true story. Okay, just to support Islam. Once, uh -huh. this is a long time ago. I was in the Middle East at that because all those things happen only when you are in the Middle East. When you live in the Middle East, nothing happened. So I, and when I was in the Middle East, long time ago, I was asleep. This is me sleeping. Hmm? Yeah. Sleeping in the bed. And I was like a kid, you know. This is my feet. Huh? And this is the bed. My mom, she came from here. And she saw me sleeping, but she saw two feet coming from my nose. And that was the feet and the shoes of the shaitan. And this is the true story. How in the world, Muhammad, he knew that shaitan, he sleep in your nose, Muslims. And why That's assuming that he could be in everyone's nose at the same time. Yeah, too. And no, no. And how, how, and why shaitan will sleep in your nose? And how big is the shaitan? 
Yeah, and like how many bodies does he have too? Because he's in more more than one person's nose at the same time. Shaitan sleep with your wife. So Shaitan he sleep on your nose, but he can sleep on your with your wife. How he can have sex with the wife, but he is so small to the point he's smaller than mosquito. <laughs> Because in order to have shaitan in my nose and I don't even feel it, he have to be so small to the point he's nothing. Because if a mosquito go in your mouth and in, in your in your nose, you will feel it right away. It's going to be very bad actually. So yeah. how how shaitan sleep in and he is so comfortable and he is not even blocking your nose because he's so tiny and so small. Like like what he is like what a dot like a dot. So this dot is going to have sex with the wife. So how you say shaitan, he have sex with the wife, how he say shaitan, he wrap himself around your penis and he will be doing the sun, how how you say shaitan will, will share with them their children and their money. This shaitan became so suddenly became tiny, small, little dot. He's a and, shapeshifter apparently. And he is going to sleep in the upper part of your nose. Hey, by the way, the Muslims, like do our nose have like a second floor and first floor? What do you mean the upper part? What your prophet means by saying in the upper part, and this is Sahih al Bukhari. Don't tell me this is a weak hadith, stupid hadith. This is Sahih al Bukhari. Where is where is the location which is called the upper part of the nose? Any Muslim can tell us? I'm touching my nose now, trying to find out where is that, you know. By the way, guys, if you know anyone. He is looking for an apartment to rent or something or even shaitan he will rent. I have two floors in the upper of my nose are vacant. All right. He can sleep as much as he wants. He will have his own privacy. Uh, and I will not sneeze the time during the time he will be sleeping there. That That is a prophet of God. You have to be a small saint for that to work. What kind of a prophet of God? He says such a stupid thing. Can't you tell that this guy is making fun of you Muslims? Exactly. This is not even something to teach to kids. You know, if I have a bunch of kids today and they are seven years old, they will not believe in this garbage. And this is the amazing wise. And look what the Muslim article they say. Ten things the prophet, ten lessons we learn from the prophet. What? That he always speak the truth. So now the shaitan, he, he play with your anus, taking hair from your ass to make you fart is a truth. Shaitan he blow wind in your anus to make you to make you feel that you fart. This is the truth. Shaitan sleep in your nose. This is the truth. Shaitan he piss in your ears. This is the truth. I mean, I, can't you tell that this is very truthful? Obviously, Muhammad is not lying. Here, number two about the Prophet. Think beyond the narrow borders. Obviously, Muhammad he thought beyond any borders. This is why his the promise of his penis can go all beyond the galaxies. When Actually, Muhammad, I don't want to disturb you anymore, so I'll just hang up. All right. God bless. Okay, my friend. Thank you for calling. If there is any Muslim would like to call, feel free. Muhammad, he think beyond narrow borders. What? Muhammad beyond nationalism, Muhammad beyond, what, do you, what are you talking about? Muhammad, he insists that the Arab are the top. He beyond nationalism to make you lose your identity, but he will not let the Arab lose their identity. They want to make the Arab clone you, or so let us say, you clone yourself, you make yourself an Arab. So look what Muhammad did. He claimed to be a prophet for all mankind. He wants you to lose your identity as a Persian, as a Hindu, Indian, as a European, and forget about it, and you will become an Arab. You have to pray to God in Arabic. You have to read to God in Arabic. You have to recite to convert to Islam in Arabic. You cannot convert to Islam in English. You cannot say the Shahada in Latino or Spanish. You have to convert yourself into the Arabic. To make it simple, let us say we have uh, you have you, you you go somewhere different country and you have a shaving machine. Hmm? You want to shave your beard. 
in America, we have electricity, which is 110. In other countries, is 220. Stop. You cannot use your hair dryer or your shaving machine in this blog. You have to convert whatever you have and make it as we are. So a Muslim, when he convert to Islam, he convert to Arabia. He is not converting to Islam. He is converting to the Islamic Arabia. This is why you see a Muslim who is from Pakistan. Suddenly, he is not speaking to you in a pure of his tongue. Suddenly, he is saying, "Assalamu alaikum, my brother." Why you don't say to me, "Peace to you" in your language? Why you say "Assalamu alaikum"? Why I have to pray? You know, I am a Christian. I do not need to uh, to pray in Hebrew to God. Our God is not a Hebrew God. He has God for everybody. He, he, he knows all languages. Doesn't matter what the language is. Doesn't matter what the color is. Who care? This God, he wants you to be an Arab. The food have to have acceptance by the Arab. The clothes have to be according to the Arab. The language, the words, even the music. You lose your identity. Like, do you, do you see this guy, the idiot, the one who is a convert in jail, the redhead? You know, he is born in America, he's an American, and then suddenly he said, Salaam alaikum, he's not talking American anymore, he's speaking Arabic. He's trying, he don't know Arabic, but he's trying to speak as if he's an Arab. And then they started dressing like Arab. Now, look at the lie number three. Muhammad, he wish good for others. Are you sure? <laughs> Muhammad, he wish good for others. Uh, let us see some of the Muhammad wishes. This is a wish of the good wishes of Muhammad. Omar narrated, I heard the Messenger of Allah says, I will certainly expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula so they so as to leave only Muslim in it. That was a wish. The Messenger of Allah said, If I live, if Allah wills, I will expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. Where is the good wishes of Muhammad? Is that a good wish? So should I make a wish the same as Muhammad wish now? If I say such a wish, Muslims, they will say this guy is teaching hate. Imagine you say, my wish that we will kick out uh, potato, tomato out of the uh, uh, America. Out of uh, Mexico, out of uh, Europe. Hmm? The Muslim, they will say, you are a racist, you are teaching hate, you are a fascist, you are like Hitler, even though they fought with Hitler and they sponsor him and they love him. So where is the good wishes of Muhammad? Hmm? Where is the wishes of Muhammad? That is a good wish. So Muslim, they lie. What about Muhammad cursing? What about Muhammad beating women? Muhammad beating Muslims? Let us see.
I will see where is the hadith about Muhammad beating the Muslims, cursing the Muslims. Uh, All right, let us see. Muhammad saying the following. Read with me carefully, Muslims. O oh Allah, I make a covenant with thee against which thou would not never go. I am a human being, and thus for a Muslim who I gave any harm, I gave any harm, or whom I scold, or upon whom I invoke curse, or whom I beat, make this a source of a blessing, purification. Like what the heck? The prophet saying here that he is a person who do the following things he harm others who are those the muslims you see he says muslim he harm and he called them bad language you see actually in arabic here it says like uh, uh, you know, like uh, I say to you, if you so Muhammad is speaking here a filthy language, using a bad language with people, curse you, or whom I beat. Muhammad, he beat people, and this beating is not justified. This is why he is saying. I'm just a human, you know, I'm just a human. The reason Muhammad, he do that, because he, you know, his, his reputation became so bad, and he want to make himself look like, okay, you know what, sometime what they can do. I mean, I'm a human like you. I'm not God. But come on. And to make them cool down, for he is being unjust with them, he is saying that I ask Allah that any one of you I am unjust with him. I beat him. I curse him. I uh, say to him, that you, you, if your father, if your mother, anyone I say that to him or I do or I beat or I harm, I ask Allah to make that beating for you as a blessing and purification in the day of judgment. That is a prophet of God. Do we have any Muslim in the bushes? Do we have any Muslim in the bushes to tell us about the amazing prophet who wished to others what he wished to himself? Is that is that what amazing about him? Any Abdul? That is a prophet of God. Why Jesus did not harm anyone? Why Jesus did not beat people and he says, forgive me for beating them? And here he's convincing that it is, it is, you know, his confession is giving us a confession that he is being unjust. This is why he's saying make it as a purification for them because it's not their fault. That is a prophet of God. Let us continue with the Muslim article and the lies they have there. Lie number four. 
help a stranger one oh sorry help and strength one another the believer are like a part of a building string strengthening one another okay hmm. uh, is that an evil teaching or this is a good teaching think about it guys did Jesus says you help someone he is from my followers or you help everybody what do you think what is the correct answer should we help every human being or only we help someone is a Christian that is an evil teaching that is not a good teaching Muhammad he is saying that you help only those who they are Muslim and that explains what the Quran is saying in chapter 5 verse 51 where it says take not Christians and Jews as a friends chapter 3 verse number 28 where it says don't take non-Muslims as a friends so you cannot take non-Muslims as a friend you cannot help them you cannot be good to them you see there's a verse in the Quran is speaking about being good to non-Muslims that the fact is not what it says apparently the mother of uh, or the, the the stepmother of Aisha she came to give Aisha a gift and she asked Aisha she asked her husband if it's okay to take the gift from her because she is a kuffar suddenly Muhammad he says there is no problem to be good to others from the other belief but this is about to be good that's about getting money from them Muhammad he heard there is a there's a gift she want to send a gift she want to send the jewelries so Muhammad now he wanted the jewelries he said sure sure yeah there's no problem so what if she is a, not a believer Muhammad he said kill them wherever you find them hate them don't take them as a friends Jesus never said you help a believer only Whoever asks you for, you know, your coat, you give him your dress, which means you do your best. If somebody asks you to walk a step, you walk with him a thousand. Let us continue. Do not be unfair. Is that a true? Is that a true that Muhammad is not fair? We just showed you Muhammad saying, I curse them and I beat them. He, it's in front of you. Muhammad, he says, I curse people, I beat people unjustly. This is why he's asking that this will be a blessing for them. You see, if I beat you for a punishment as a penalty for you, something you did, because in Islam, if you commit supposed to adultery, you will be whipped. If you, uh, if you steal, we cut your hand, right? So, that is a person we do not you do not need to ask God to forgive you for cutting his hand because supposedly this is what God told you Muhammad here is talking about being unjust to people beating them harming them invoking them cursing them saying filthy language to them and what about this hadith here as an example just as an example Let's see. This is not coming. Um, let us try. Hold on. All right. This is a story. This is a story showing us if Muhammad was fair and just even in his house, he was not a good man. The people used to send present to the Prophet on the day of Aisha. Turn. Aisha said, my companions, i.e., the other wives of the Prophet, gathered in the house of Ummu Salama and said, 
Oh, Ummu Salama, by Allah, the people choose to send prison to the day on the day of Aisha's turn, uh, uh, turn, and we love the good, i.e., the present. So the wives they are complaining that people they send the gifts to Aisha in the in the house of Aisha when Muhammad only in the house of Aisha. So the wife they send it's not fair. Why they don't send gifts only when it is in the house of Aisha? What about sending gifts when we when Muhammad in our house? And the Muslim, by the way, they say to you, Muhammad was a poor guy. Imagine this guy, he's getting gifts every day. And what the Muslims do, because Aisha, she is the spoiled striptease for Muhammad. So Aisha, the one who sent gift when she this is the this is why they made this is why or what made them do send the gifts to Muhammad when he is in the house of Aisha before they used to send it to everybody I mean whatever Muhammad he is they send the gift but they notice that Aisha is his favorite wife and Aisha if she sit in his lap he will agree upon anything he or uh, she asked for so what people they decide to do they notice that when they send the gift to Aisha house the gift it was not for free there's a return this is a guy who made himself a king upon them and now you send a gift for this king for a reason so the gift is going to go only when Aisha when the turn is the turn of Aisha why because Aisha in return to you for sending the gift to her house she will do slam belly dancing. She will kiss Muhammad. She will touch him here and there and say, please uh, agree with this guy. You know, let him do etc. You know, so the people they noticed that if you want to get the benefit of the gift, which is nothing but a bribe, you better send it when Muhammad is in the house of Aisha. The wives are complaining now because all the people notice that the best place to send your gift is. Is the house of Aisha if you want to accomplish something then they came to Muhammad and they told him they want the Muhammad to say hey people send my send the present to whomever I may I, I, I may be that is justice if you want to send me a, a, a gift don't send it only when I am in the house of Aisha and remember the Muslim they say to us that Islam teach you that a husband should treat his wives equally So why now Muhammad will not treat his wives equally so he received gifts wherever he is not only in the house of Aisha look what Muhammad said Or whenever he his turn may be on Muslim said that be the prophet uh, and uh, 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 That to the prophet and he turned away from her and when the prophet returned to her i.e. on Muslim she repeated the same. She's asking again, again, again. He turned away. You see the justice man. You see the man of just. He don't want. He don't care. Don't talk to. Ah, I heard nothing. The wives they are saying to him, "This is not fair. Why the gifts will come only to the house of Aisha?" Hmm? Muhammad. He don't even have time to answer. Get lost. He don't even answer. She talk. He is not talking to her. He turned away. And then and when she told him the same for the third time, Muhammad he said, Um Salama is warning her, don't trouble me by harming Aisha. For by Allah, the divine inspiration never come to me while I was under. This is false, there's no under, there's no blanket, in any clothes except the cloth of Aisha. So Muhammad he is saying I cannot do that with Aisha. Are you stupid or what? I cannot be justice with you and look at the stupid reason For I never receive Quran except when I am Wearing the clothes of Aisha Now here we will find something very stupid Muhammad. He just said anyone notice. What is the what is the stupid? He said Anyone notice? There is something very stupid Muhammad he just did. Who noticed with me?
let us see who of you will notice what is the problem here there's a big problem anyone No, don't the Muslim they say that the first revelation come to Muhammad when he was with Khadija? Right? Because uh, Aisha, Muhammad he married to Aisha three years after Khadija's death. The second wife was Sauda Amudama, uh, and then Aisha after that. So if Muhammad he never received Quran, except the Muslim, they would try here to make it like, oh, he said this is me in the house of Aisha. Oh, this is me in the blanket of Aisha. This is oh, what blanket? Muhammad received Quran in the blanket. <laughs> so, if we assume, for the sake of argument, as the Muslim they say that this is the house of Aisha, what he meant. That's mean Muhammad he never never received Quran before Aisha. That's mean the first three years of his life, or let us say the first four or five years, was a fiction prophet prophethood. He never received any verse when he was in the house of Khadija. I'm not going to even to talk about Muhammad in the cave, you know. Forget about it. Let us focus in the house of Khadija and the house of Aisha. And why Allah He will give Muhammad Quran only when he is with Aisha. Isn't that weird? Muhammad only his prophethood activated only when he is in the house of Aisha, which means once a, once every two weeks. Muhammad, you have many wives. Only one day every every 13, 14 days. Muhammad received Quran. And that activation happened only when Muhammad in the house of Aisha. This hadith confirmed that Muhammad never received Quran in any house other than the house of Aisha, any clothes, any other the clothes of Aisha, any even they say blanket, let's say other blanket, any uh, except the blanket of Aisha. Why? Hmm? Do we have any Muslim here would like to explain to us the madness? Guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And those who like to contact me, you can contact me in the in the link the showing underneath in the info of the of the video. All right. Do we have any Muslim here? So where is justice? So you Muslim, you lie to us, you say there's justice in Islam. I don't see the justice in Islam. A man, he cannot even be just with his wives. He cannot be just with... This is his own house. In his house, he is not just. Is it just that only Aisha receive the gifts and the other wives? So the Quran statement that, you know, you should be just with your wives, Muhammad is the last one to follow it. Even in different story, it says that even they sent Fatima, which supposedly she is the daughter of Khadija or his daughter, as they claim. Even that will not think Muhammad change his mind. It's still, Muhammad he don't want to respond. He don't care, and he want the gifts to come to the house of Aisha. Why? Where is justice? See all those stories reporting the same thing. Hmm? Don't hurt me regarding Aisha as the divine inspiration do not come to me in any look guys here it, the word it changed it became the bed hmm? But in Arabic it says the following it doesn't say bed it's a lie in Arabic it says for those who speak Arabic, فَإِنَّ الْوَحْيَ لَمْ يَأْتِنِي 
وأنا في ثوب إمرأة إلا عائشة. The inspiration of Allah never come to me in any clothes of a woman except the clothing of Aisha. That is what it is in front of your eyes. And then the wives of Muhammad, they give up. So they decide to speak to his daughter, supposedly, which he liked very much. And this is a daughter she grew under, you know, his... Uh, after, after he married her mother Khadija, this is not his daughter. The Muslim they claim that Fatima is his daughter, real daughter. This is false. Muhammad never, never have kids. Then they ask the daughter of Muhammad. Uh, actually, and they send here the story here. They send even Zainab bin Tujah. She remember Zainab, the one Muhammad was flirting with, the one she was married to his son. Even Zainab, she could not make him change his mind that's it Aisha is the queen all the other women is just for sex entertainment Aisha is the best of his sexuality so they ask Zainab bin Tujash the one who Allah supposedly asked Muhammad to marry her look at this lie do we have any Abdul Where is the justice? A man who cannot be even just in his house, he will be justice to others? You Muslims, you lie. That is not justice. That is a big fat lie. We can mention tons of uh, things about being unjust. Uh, as an example, is it justice to attack somebody and take his house and his wife from him? Is it just to go and kill the tribe of somebody they never attack him and steal their money and their animals and rape their women? Is that the being unfair? What the Muslims are talking about? Muhammad was a thief, was a rapist, was a criminal, was a, what, what, everything wrong is in him. Is it fair to order your son to divorce his wife so he can sleep with her? Treat the neighbor with kindness. Muhammad, he treat the neighbor with kindness. Hmm. How is that? The Muslim, they will tell you a story, which we do not know where it's coming from, that there is a guy, he is a Jewish guy. And this Jewish guy, he used to piss on the door of Muhammad. Any Muslim want to read for me this story about the Jewish guy? Who is a Muslim want to show me the source of this story about the Jewish who piss on the door of Muhammad? Any Abdul? Who is going to show me this story? I want to see it. I want to learn from you Muslims. Where we get, where we can find this story? The Jewish guy who pee in the house of Muhammad door. Huh? Anyone? Fabrications and lies and fictions. And when you ask them to show us the stories, you know, they, they are in trouble. Be kind to every living being. Are you sure? So is it your prophet who asked to kill the Mr. Lizard? You can't even be nice to a lizard. Be kind to every... Who is the one who want to kill the pigs? Who is the one who want to slaughter every black dog? What do you mean, be kind to every living kind? Let us see. Be kind, huh? Hmm. I heard Allah messenger may peace upon him Allah pray on him commanding the killing of the dogs 
is killing the dogs is part of being kind to every human being for sure he asked to kill many animals you know huh Let us see. Be nice, huh? Hmm. <clears throat> it was narrated from Ummu Sharik that the Prophet told her to kill the house lizards. Uh huh. Okay, another one. Uh huh. Hmm. Look at the here. This is different knowledge, by the way. Here is science. Here is science. Muhammad is teaching his followers that the lizard, the lizard, are a nation. Who used to be human, but Allah, He distorted them. Any Muslim here, He agree with this, that lizard they used to be human like us, and this is why the Prophet He refused to eat them. Any Abdul? Is that really true that Mr. Lizard is a human like us? This is why we cannot eat them. Allah, he cursed them and he made them lizard. Those are used to be human. I saw actually a movie about, uh, I forget the name. I think it was Cinderella. Uh, the driver of Cinderella's, they used to be lizard. Do you Muslim believe in this garbage? Hmm. Let us continue. And here we will find some explanation for this. Read with me carefully. Guys, read, read carefully, please. I mean, Muhammad is really amazing. Amazing stupidity. We were in the army with... The messenger of Allah we got some lizard I roasted one lizard and brought it to the messenger of Allah and place it before him he took a stick and he counted its fingers ah, Muhammad now is thinking why the lizard have fingers like us have five fingers hmm. and he said a group of the children of Israel was it transformed into animal of the land and I do not know which animal it was he did not eat it nor did forbid it so Muhammad he think that mr. lizard is a Jew Any Abdul? Are you really Muslims believe that if we eat a lizard, we are eating a Jew? Actually, in the other day, I was eating a lizard, and uh, the lizard was wearing a ring, you know. It says, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. True story. Who is the stupid here, Muslims? You know, Muhammad, he made the Jews monkeys. He made them uh, pigs. He, now they are lizard. In different hadith, Muhammad, he claimed that the Jews, Allah made the rats from them. You believe it? The rats. You don't believe me? Let me show you. Hold on.
Let us see. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Look at this guy. The prophet said, the prophet said, a group of Israelists were lost. Nobody knows what they did. But I do not see them except that they were cursed and changed into rats. For if you put the milk of a she camel in the front of a rat, it will not drink it. But if you, if the milk of a sheep is put in the front of it, it will drink it. Now look at this logic. According to the Prophet of Islam, this guy he was a scientist, obviously. He is a deep thinker. Hmm? He is a deep thinker so he look at the rat why the rats are not drinking the she camel milk what the heck why and he started squeezing his ass i mean his head scratching 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 bingo i got it i noticed that the jews don't drink camel milk Rats don't drink camel milk. That means that those rats, they used to be or they are Orthodox Jews. Like what? The, this is super intelligence, my friend. How the prophet, he come to such a conclusion and super intelligent. So according to Muhammad, logic donkeys don't drink whiskey muslims don't drink whiskeys that's mean that donkeys are muslims I mean the logic of the prophet and the intelligence of the prophet is beyond imagination who can think deep like this hmm? huh? let us make a difference Rats, they drink urine. Muslims, they drink urine. As you know, the Prophet, he ordered them to drink camel urine. Does that mean that those rats are cursed Muslims? I mean, what is that? What this guy is talking about? This is a Prophet of God? And why he is so confused? Sometimes the Jews are lizards, sometimes they are rats, sometimes they are monkeys, sometimes they are pigs. Any Abdul? Do we have any Abdul in the bushes? Who is Abdul is willing to call us and show us something is smart about we, we are willing to change the whole topic trust me if you are if you can be a, a person who show us something smart about your prophet we will be happy to hear about it because until now I never saw something smart about your prophet he is coming back after dinner Renee do you believe in that I remember a Muslim, he was debating me. He told me he want to go to the bathroom for two minutes. And since then, this was in the year 2000. Until now, he did not come back. Yeah, keep waiting. 
I'm afraid he fell in the twilight seat or something, or maybe Allah he cursed him and make him a rat or lizard. You never know. You know. Any Abdul? Any Muslim here? So look, you know, it, 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 try to connect all the knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah pray on him. Like Shaitan, he take care of from your anus to make you fart. Shaitan, he blow in the anus to make you feel or think you are farting. Shaitan is sleep on your nose. Shaitan piss in your ears. Lizard is a Jew. The, the rat are Jews. I mean, this guy is all over the place with his amazing science. Do we have any Muslim here? Hmm? Any Abdul? But once I ask a Muslim about the shaitan sleeping in the nose of the Muslims, he said, uh, according to the uh, 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 the judge, uh, uh, you know, there's a big scholar, you know, uh, he said uh, that it's a proven that the way for shaitan to reach into your heart is to go in your nose. It's It's proven. What you can do, it's proven. What you can say, you know, if it, as long as it's a proven, it's a proven. Yeah, it's a proven. Shaitan, he reached your heart through your nose, you know. Uh, by the way, if there is a girl, she would like, you know, she is looking for a nice husband, she want to marry me. The only way to reach to me, to my heart, you have to go through my nose. <laughs> oh boy, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I mean, why you people are laughing? I mean, this is a serious thing, you know. If you want to get to my to the heart of the man, obviously, the way to get into the heart of a person is his nose. And if a woman she want to get to the heart of uh, a man, you know, it have to be his nose. So the first thing you do when you see a man, you start you put your finger and you start digging and cleaning his boogers, <laughs> so you can get a space for yourself to get in. You know? <laughs> Mm. All right, all right. That's enough. That's enough. I'm not. I'm not joking, guys. This is what the scholars they're saying. I can show you even the reference that the, you know that the the way to the heart is the nose. It might look funny for you, but this is how it is. What we can say. Hmm? Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> Hmm? Okay, look like today we are dry again. We are dry for the last two days. I'm not sure why. And you guys, you promised me you, you will bring me some Abdul's here. You got me nothing. Very disappointing. Where is the Abdul? Who is the Abdul is going to give us a call? Hmm? You know what? I'm so glad that the scars of Islam, they found that the way of shaitan to reach into your heart is the nose. It's going to be very embarrassing. Is is going to go inside the anus. I mean, that's really scary. If this is the scenario, I would never go to the bathroom again. 
Imagine you go to the bathroom, you find shaitan trying to get in. Actually, Muhammad he said that shaitan he get in your in your anus, correct? Anyone remember the hadith? Anyone remember? You remember the video we played about the sheikh about farting? And he said he explained how shaitan, when you go to the bathroom, uh, if you don't say a certain prayer, shaitan is going to play with your anus and he's going to go inside your anus and he will block it. So you go inside the bathroom, you think he will do it in two minutes, but then uh, shaitan he block it and you stay there for like an hour. Hmm? Any Muslim? Obviously, Islam is a superstition religion full of stupid stories. And, you know, to be a Muslim is to believe in it because either you accept Islam as it is or you reject Islam as it is. There's no so-so. Like those who say to us, we don't accept Hadith. They are just trying to avoid the madness of their prophet. But the Quran is even more stupid than the Hadith. You cannot go to the bathroom without saying that a prayer, otherwise shaitan is going to do some bad damage inside your bum. He will go inside, he will block it, he will put concrete, he will put boogers, he will put his shoes, his feet, he will bring leaf and wood, he will bring, uh, uh, you know, uh, some scrap from the neighborhood, everything. All right? So you have, you have, to say a certain prayer, let us see. <sighs> I don't know if I should read this one for you. I don't know. Is anyone is here eating? Who of you is eating? If you are eating, put me in a mute. Temporarily. Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace upon him, saw some sputum. Where? He saw what? What What the Prophet of Allah he saw? Some boogers. In the direction of the Qibla of the mosque. Oh boy. Okay, thank you for correcting me in the pronunciation. Spi spiutum spi sp spitum spitum. Is that how you say it? Spitum? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me use Google. Uh, I, I know I, I'm not expert with the spitum. Sorry, <laughs> spitum. Okay, Sp spitum, spitum. Okay. Anyway, whatever it is, it's a bullshit. Sorry, excuse my language. <laughs> How is that? Some among you stand before his Lord, and then he spit out in front of him. Does any of you like that he should be made to stand in front of someone and then spit in his face? The Muslim, they used to spit in the Kaaba? Muhammad, are you serious? The Muslims, they are spitting in the house of Allah? Actually, this is not a spitting, really. This is something you take from your, you know, like the, I don't know what they call it. I'm not sure if the translation is accurate. It's like the the ugly thing coming from your nose. It's not. It's not. Uh... Anyway, so when any of you spits, he must spit in on his left side under his foot. But if he does not find a space to spit, he should do like this. Huh? Oh, do what? Spit in your clothes. 
Spit in your clothes? Spit in your clothes? And they ask John Ekland, what his name, Van Damme, how you keep yourself healthy in this age? He said, I, as an example, look at the prophet. He was old, but he was healthy. <laughs> he should do like this. The prophet is teaching us how we should get our dirt, which is our boogers and, you know, whatever, you know, things from your nose and, you know, where in my clothes. And this is supposedly the right way to do it. Do we have any Abdul? Uh, Rene, you want to call? Uh, Rene, she could not resist it, uh, the temptation of the topic. She want to call. Hmm. I have a question out of 25 prophets mentioned in the Quran. How many of them they are Jews? None of them. <laughs> None of them, my friend. They are Muslims. All of them they are Muslims. None of them is Jews. You know, one of the funny of the, uh, things about the Muslims, they say to you that Musa was a Muslim, but did the Quran call them Jews? I mean, how you call them Jews, but yet they are Muslims? How you call them Christians, but that they are Muslims? Either they are Christians or they are Muslims. If, they, if, if Isa was a Muslim, why his followers are called Nasara? If Musa was a Muslim, why his followers are called Jews? If Muhammad was a Muslim, why his followers was called Muslims? Let it go, let it go, let it go. Hmm. Why don't you find some Muslims? You're asking me? I wish. I, I, I'm begging for a Muslim for the last three hours. This guy is asking me why you don't find Muslims. Where are they? You bring them to me. Here we go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, all those who they are mentioned in the in the Quran, uh, 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 simply uh, in the connection with Abraham, those are. Uh, considered like uh, from the family of the Jews. However, the Jews supposedly they started from uh, Moses and Aaron. So, uh, you know, Quran does not give introduction. So you can all you can you can add Jacob, uh, Moses, Aaron, and then supposedly uh, Isa, and you add uh, John the Baptist. Then after that, the Quran mentioned three prophets, but doesn't. Even the Quran never say who they are. But as you know, uh, according to the interpretation, it says that they are Paul, Paulus, and uh, uh, John, and uh, 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 John, uh, John. I'm sorry, John and Paulus, and uh, Simon or Simon. He said not all they were Jews. Well, that is that means he's stupid because if uh, if Jesus is not in the Muslim, they say Jesus was sent to the Jews. So how he is not a Jew according to them? And why the Quran called them Jews then if they are not Jews? What about Israel? Israel was a Jew, <laughs> or not? Anyway. Madness. Do we have any Abdul here? Any Muslim? By the way, I noticed that lately uh, nobody is uh, helping us in, uh, in donation for some reason. Look like people, they think we, uh, we do not need because we don't mention. We don't say and we don't talk about it so people they don't do it I'm not sure what is should I mention it every time I do podcast should really I ask and say guys we don't forget to help us that's not nice anyway what we can do 
any Abdul, any Abdul in the bushes. Yeah, just be careful, my friend. If you bought my book, I've been told uh, that some people they bought my book, and after they get it, they cannot put it down. They could not put it down. I think there's a problem with the glue. I'm just joking. My coming book is going to be about Islam and sex. And actually, the name of the book is going Sex and Allah. Uh, I hope maybe in in 10, maximum, maximum 15 days is going to be out. Uh, it's going to be two volumes, volume number one and volume two. Volume number one is going to speak about Islam, uh, sexuality in, for the Arab before Islam, and then we go to Islam, and that will be about sexuality in the earth. And then volume number two is going to contain some about sexuality and Islam in earth, and then continue to sexuality in heaven. So this book will be very, very good, and people, they will learn a lot of uh, things I never even spoke about here. Uh, you know, because usually we speak about things, you know, it's let us say fast, easy, convincing, uh, straight to the point. But when it's come to making a book, you have to make it more professional and more into details. You know, the German book is done actually, the one, the second one, but uh, we are doing the proofreading, it's taking long what I can do. You know, when people, they help you and they are helping, they are not getting paid, you cannot ask to rush and do it now. And You know what I mean? What you can say? Uh, if we have the money to hire a professional person, we can finish it maybe in two weeks. But uh, it's taking long because people, they are doing volunteer work. If you watch the video from the beginning, why why was your Wikipedia article deleted? I don't know if it's deleted or not. Why is deleted? I'm not sure. I'm not the one who made the article anyway. But maybe a Muslim he went there and he deleted. Maybe. No. Yeah. Wikipedia does not have any article with this exact name. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think maybe somebody log in and play with it. It's a work of idea. That's weird. <clears throat> anyway, for sure, this is the act of the Muslims. And the one who made it, he should go and uh, check it out. Any Abdul? Anyone? Enable super chat for your YouTube profile. What is super chat? I'm not sure. Isn't it? This is a chat. There's super chat and chat. No, if you want to make a donation, you can go. There is a link there patreon.com. This is where we take donation, and you can use even PayPal or anything. I don't use YouTube for donation. Any Abdul? <clears throat>
¿no? Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Not even on Muslim? All right, anyone have a question? Anyone have a question for me? Where's the guy, the Muslim guy who wanna go for dinner and come back? Hakan Turk, you are a Muslim, Mr. Hakan. Why you don't call us? <clears throat> I don't see anything. No caller. All right. Well, as long as there is no callers, uh, I think today we cover many topics. What's the question? Why Muhammad ordered to pray in battle? I'm not sure what do you mean. Muhammad, he pray for any reasons. Muhammad, he make an excuse. Uh, as an example, uh, uh, Muhammad, when he say the eclipse, he go crazy and he start praying, and he bow down. So that's not not uh, weird. I mean, this is normal. And if you if you have a war, if you are you yourself, before you go to the field in the war, you pray. Nothing wrong with that. I don't see something strange there. Anyone? <clears throat> All right, look like we don't have really. I mean, why he should do to when he is a liar? Well, you know, you can you can do uh, uh, you can ask people to pray to to claim that you are a person of God. Why not? There's many false people who claim to be Christ, as an example. And they act, and they shake, and he is praying, and even they cry, you know. But they are false. You never heard of somebody, he act. You never heard of somebody, he is a false, uh, even Christian minister. The Bible says that people, they will come to you, false prophet, they will come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. So in order to sheep yourself, to make yourself a sheep, not a wolf, you have to act as if you are one. So... Uh, my friend in in uh, in Patreon, they accept the link is down in the in the info of the uh, video. They accept, I think, PayPal, credit card, whatever you have. It's very easy. 
and you can make it one time donation uh, every uh, beginning of the month they charge between the first and the sixth if you don't want to continue you can go anytime and cancel it and if you make a donation now they will not charge you right away they will uh, they will collect between the th uh, the, the first and the sixth of the month this is the rules of uh, patreon you can use your paypal you can use uh, whatever account they have many ways all right and the link is down in the video down the info anyone no more no muslims it doesn't matter where you go and make a donation they will take it the percentage they will take it from me not from you so if you make a donation of a uh, hundred dollar they will take I think I don't know 10 percent and then there's service fees and then after that I you know pay tax it's not yeah you, what what will end there is not going to be but what you can do this is the only way to do it any Abdul yeah the Muslims they give nine dislike but not even one of them dare to give us a call Right. Yeah, even uh, even our books, you know, my books, Amazon make money more than me. If you go and buy, as an example, Kindle book, Kindle, let us say it is for ten dollars, seven dollars go to Amazon, three dollars go to me. <laughs> you believe it? I am the one who owned the book. They make seven dollars, I make three. But what you can do? I mean, they get rich. They get the money. Yeah, it's not up to you. You don't like it? Go. Don't list your books with them. They make. They are the one who make the money. Really. <clears throat> they make three times more than you do. Uh, Jay, let us do it maybe tomorrow. You know, today we have enough, and we don't have. Uh... Yeah, my, you know, my friend, you have no choice. You know, this is their own platform, and they will tell you, you don't like it. You know, but there is nothing better. Uh, you can sell the books by your own, right? But then there is a problems. There is liars, there is false people, there is etc. There is people, they send you, you send them uh, the book, they say we did not receive it. And you do not know who is the truthful, who is the liar. It's a lot of headache. You know? With Amazon, there is no headache. They take more, but at least there is no headache. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And until we see you tomorrow again, maybe tomorrow we'll do it earlier because it's Sunday, you know. Um, so until I see you tomorrow, don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time. And um, uh, I hope tomorrow we will have some Abdul's who are willing to call us and uh, prove us wrong. And I hope, I hope they will do better next time. Thank you. Uh, but wait, what, what Mr. Akhan said? why he should pray he could find an excuse my friend your prophet he died by poison anyway and as long as you mention this I'm not going to finish let me finish this then you're a prophet you're a prophet he said in the Quran that if Muhammad is lying Allah told him if Muhammad is lying Allah will cut his orta And this is exactly how Muhammad died. So Muhammad, he prayed, asking, or he claimed that Allah said, if he is lying, in chapter 69, verse number 46, it says, ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَ مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ So if Muhammad is fabricating verses, fabricating words of God, lying about God, we are going to grab him, and we are going to cut his orta. And this is exactly how Muhammad died. What do you want more proof, Mr. Uh, the Turkish guy? Is he still there?
this is exactly how you profit okay but I'm saying to you Muhammad praying or not will not change anything because here we go Muhammad is saying that his God said if he is lying Allah will cut his arta and then we go to the hadith we know that Muhammad he died by a poison and his arta was cut off so here we go his prayer work in the opposite direction proving him to be a false prophet so why somebody pray before the battle doesn't mean that he is a good man that's mean he's an actor because remember he claimed to be a prophet if I claim to be a prophet I have to act like one if I claim to be a priest I have to act like one so praying does not make him a good person he is a liar at the end and here we go he got himself busted no no we will not uh, take calls you know I just want to answer this guy maybe tomorrow guys you can call me so here we go Muhammad he die and he is the one witnessing for how he dies saying read with me carefully I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar hmm? I feel as if my order is being cut off from the poison and it is Muhammad who said that if I am lying Allah said if I'm lying fabricating words about God inventing Quran Allah will cut my order do you want more reference and prove that the prayer of Muhammad is false and I believe what happened here it is not Allah punish him for his lies I believe it's my Lord he punish him expose him for his lies so he made a challenge saying, you know what? If I am lying, Allah said to me, he will cut my order. Our Lord, he wanted to show everybody that this man is a false man. So he decided to punish him as he wish. And I think it's very clear. So thank you guys for being here. And I will see you tomorrow again. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. And Islam is false. And see you soon again. Take care.